good morning. Uh, thank you very much for your kind words. Uh, at, at the beginning of the talk, I would like to thank the organizers, Dr. Arvind, Dr. Shashank, uh, Dr. Sunil Jain, Bansi Sabu, uh, Manoj Chawla, and of course, Bharat Sabu for inviting me here. Today, I speak on uh, the shift duties in young type 2 diabetes. Yeah. So, uh, good morning to the audience. I would also like to acknowledge the presence of IDF Southeast Asia President uh, Dr. Azad Khan here. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, okay, fine. So, um, uh, we all know that shift working is something that has, uh, because of the advances in technology, there is a large amount of people who work around the clock. They work shifts all through the day. And uh, a lot of them uh, have a higher incidence of type 2 diabetes, obesity, other metabolic diseases, as well as uh, uh, they, those that are diabetic find it even more difficult to manage them. So basically, shift work is anything which is outside the parameters of the time um, from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. because that's supposed to be the normal time that people would go to work. Um, there are three different types of general shifts. For those of us who went yesterday evening to Chapandukan or anywhere else, we would know that there are people who served us, cooked food, uh, they were there to present it. For those of us who watch IPL, we know that there are people who work those shifts also, sports people, commentators, all that. Then the second shift is the night shift, which is like 11 p.m. to 3 a.m., in which the most common is doctors. I'm sure all of us have worked night shifts at some point of time, and a lot of them do continue to work night shifts also. Then besides that, there are police officers, firefighters, uh, bakers, um, truck drivers, um, people at the airport, air tra traffic control, and then the others are the early morning shifts, which is like 8 a, uh, 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. So those who went to Mahakaleshwar today in the morning, the temple, the priest, you know. So those are the kind of people who do those morning shifts. Of course, fishermen in Bombay, we have fishermen who go out early morning. Then we have farmers. So these are the different types of shifts that are there. Um, now, besides that, there is the rotating shifts. Uh, rotating shifts also is uh, three types. Uh, continental shift is wherein they uh, do, uh, uh, each shift is of about eight hours and there are seven working days. And then after doing, so they do a day shift, an evening shift, a night shift, then they get two, three days off. Then there is uh, the Panama shift, which is two days you do morning shift, two days afternoon and evening. Thereafter, you get another day off. So that's 14 week cycle. DuPont is a longer, wherein there is a four-week shift uh, where they rotate between day and night shifts, and this is usually about four weeks. Besides that, there is this rotating shift, wherein a lot of times they are haphazard shifts. Uh, sometimes they rotate forward, sometimes they rotate backward. So these, the idea of saying all this is because each shift or each type of shift requires a different kind of uh, understanding of how what the patient is going through, and therefore we can personalize the treatment. We all know that we all work with circadian rhythms. We have been working for the last uh, billion years, wherein uh, there are a diurnal variation between what the daylight, which is between 10,000 to 1 lakh lux during the day, and uh, in the night, there's 0.1 to 0.5 lux. Uh, of light. Uh, we also have a circadian clock in our body, which is basically the cluster which is in the suprachiasmal nucleus, which works. Now, according to this, our body's physiological is set. But, uh, and this is, uh, this helps us determine what are our food availabilities, the mate availability, sleep times, what are the predator activities uh, throughout each day. Um, so, but however, the rotating shift, the shift working, this disrupts all these schedules. And this therefore leads to obesity, metabolic syndrome, glucose dysregulation, and further type 2 diabetes. 
Uh, this is one of the studies which followed the nurses' uh, health study, which was one of the largest studies done. In uh, the nurses' health study, part one was about 69,000 women. Part two was about 1,7,000 1, uh, approximately. So these women mostly were nurses who had worked night shifts all their life, uh, definitely more than three nights per month. And they also self-reported whether they had type 2 diabetes or not. And these were compared with those women who had no knife shifts. And uh, the participants were find, found to have a higher incidence of, uh, uh, as compared to the participants. Uh, further, they also had age-adjusted um, body mass index, which showed that they, uh, they concluded, basically, that uh, extended periods of working night sh shift was uh, associated with an increase in the num in the type 2 diabetes also this is partially mediated because of the body weight so proper intervention screening is required for those who do night shifts to prevent diabetes there also is a biological link uh, because of the exposure to artificial night, uh, light at night. Nowadays, we see younger people, all are addicted to their screens. It's either the screen on their phone, it's on the screen on the TV, it's on their laptop, something or the other. Associated with that is late night eating. A lot of times we have people who come back home from work at maybe 11, 12, 1, 2, depending on what. Then they eat a large meal and subsequently they go to sleep. Their night shift also, they're you know, working, then they come home early morning eating a larger meal. Then there is social lag, like a lot of people go uh, partying out every weekend and things like that. So all this contributes to um, the social, uh, the circadian disruption which happens. Those who are working night shifts, they feel that they are missing out. So the days that they are not working, they will go out to a party and things like that. So those are all what lead to the uh, impaired metabolism and therefore cause uh, endocrine and cardiac diseases. Um, I think I can skip this. Um, so basically, one in five employees in the US works in these non-standard hours. And consequently, the um, nurses, of course, we know, and, and doctors also, they work uh, shift hours to prevent services around the clock. Uh, in 2015, the National Institute of Occupational Safety has provided courses to train the nurses as well as the managers as to what are the risks of doing shift duties. And therefore, they can incorporate some changes in their lifestyle so as to see that how they can avoid these lifestyle diseases. There are, of course, many other uh, studies which have been there, which have shown that excessive of adiposity, increased smoking also is associated, as well as a reduction in the physical activity. Um, so biological reasons in, uh, that are there with shift workers is that uh, there is a circadian disturbance due to which the sleep, the exercise routine, the diet, all that is... Uh, a little uh, haphazard. Uh, this causes insulin resistance, causing weight gain, and then leading to type 2 diabetes. There is a lot of disturbance in the sleep. Um, there are uh, many literatures which have shown that the disturbance is common in people with type 2 diabetes. Besides that, of course, in people who have type 2 diabetes, there sometimes could be the risk of no, uh, nocturnal hypoglycemia, which could occur. A lot of times they are waking up in the night to go to pass urine. They have a lot of nocturnuria which is there. This also disturbs their sleep. Uh, then there is the um, there was another study which showed that um, the circadian rhythm is known to disrupt the uh, glucose metabolism. This was observed in majority of the night shift workers. There was an increased risk in diabetes. And in addition to, there's always a shorter duration of sleep, which was there, and unhealthy uh, lifestyle, which was there. Uh, this was conducted over 262 patients, 60 patients who had type 2 diabetes. Their sleep duration, sleep quality, and their daily calories, as well as their most recent HbA1c was obtained from their records. They were about 56-year-old. 
and the night shift workers had a significant higher HbA1c as compared to the day workers. Uh, they were also, the night shift workers were much younger as well as they had a shorter duration of diabetes and a higher BMI. Um, also, the, the night shift workers consume more daily calories than the day workers and the, environment, uh, the unemployed people. After adjusting for all the age, sex, BMI, diabetes duration, insulin use, sleep duration and percentage, it was associated with higher HbA1c levels as compared to the day workers. So it was concluded that the night shift workers had definitely poor glycemic control than the day workers and they were, this was independent of the sleep duration and dietary intake. This supports that the, um, that the adverse effects of circadian disruption on glucose metabolism and therefore we need to intervene possibly targeting the reduction of the circadian misalignment which, is, which can improve the glycemia control. So basically this is what uh, it all encompasses that circadian misalignment causes hypertension, hyperglycemia, uh, hyperlipidemia, cholesterolemia and therefore uh, increases the risk of obesity, diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Um, I think I'll skip through this portion. Okay. So basically how do we manage these people when they come to us? Uh, the guidelines, the endocrine guidelines say that anybody who's working night shift should eat a healthy diet, uh, take all the medications as per the prescription, and they should follow a regular exercise pattern. The National Institute of Diabetes also says that they should work with a dietitian and uh, probably eat a good um, healthy life, like a lot of grains, vegetables, dairy, fruit, protein. And... Uh, the American Diabetic Association says that they should prepare the, with the, for the night shift by checking their blood sugars as required. Uh, they should take in, in there. What's very important is that they make, must make a connection with their co-workers in case there is a requirement, if they go into hypoglycemia, somebody in their co-working space should be able to detect that they have had hypoglycemia and should be able to provide any assistance if required. Uh, they should also uh, keep an eye out for patterns which uh, develop as per the insulin dosage. They should have a different treatment plan for their off working days as well as for their on working days. Um, avoid caffeine about four to six hours before bedtime. Check their blood sugars before bedtime. Carry the insulin pen. It's easier as compared to a vial or syringe. Um, if required, insulin pump or glucose monitoring. Um, during the working hours, they must take walking breaks, if possible, to increase their activity levels and avoid heavy meals before bedtime. So the takeaway is that um, the shift workers, of course, there's an adverse if, uh, effect on type 2 diabetes and uh, particularly overnight and varying uh, duties which are there. They should take preventive issues uh, with their glucose overnight and plan their meals uh, before time, uh, keep up with an exercise program, as well as uh, work with their healthcare provider to provide a good management program. Uh, what we don't usually consider is the emotional impact. Uh, a lot of times it was found that these people do tend to experience mental health issues as compared to those who have worked uh, for the day workers, uh, especially women, uh, there are a lot of depressive symptoms which are there, which need to be addressed. As a healthcare physician, we need to ask our patients who are doing uh, shift duties, whether there is any, um, you know, if they're feeling sad, if they're feeling depressed, if there's any loss of appetite, if there are any sleeping issues, uh, have they lost interest in their hobbies? Are there any low energy levels? Um, are they finding it difficult to concentrate at work, at home, uh, any thoughts of suicide? All these things are something which we must ask besides, of course, checking their blood sugar parameters. The physical parameter, physical impact is also that they do not get time to work, uh, work out, they do not get time to make their meals. So all these things we should, uh, another thing what's very important is those who are on, on shift duties is their social connect they tend to get socially isolated from their friends, relatives and all that. 
uh, what is very important is another thing called micro sleep this is what uh, occurs temporarily drowsiness which occurs so this is hampers their day to day life um, so basically i'll just conclude another one of this slide uh, so they are advised to eat their lunch on time uh, at 12 pm as well as the dinner around 6 pm irrespective of what the times of work are they should not have any heavy meals after that maybe they can carry some snacks when they are working uh, late in the night avoid any snacks from the vending machines or uh, maybe even sugar laden drinks they should stay active as far as possible and stay connected to their doctors while i was researching i came across the statement of our president elect of rssdi which said that shift working is also linked to other work other risk factors for diabetes such as poor diet lack of physical exercise and physical activity and those who work um, these hours usually have less time to prepare healthy meals and are more likely to turn to fast food <coughs> or convenience foods which are again high in calories sugar and fats Madam, please. <coughs> Sorry. Sum up, please. Yeah, just a minute. Which is why I wanted to yeah, end with inviting you all for the Mahakum of Diabetes, which is RSS DI twenty twenty three. Doctor Rakesh Sai is of course going to be our cha- uh, chairperson, uh, the scientific chairperson, and um, a stall is there for anybody who would like to register. Thank you. <laughs>